Uh, good afternoon, YouTubers. Today I'd like to show you my uh, latest project here. It is the three and a half cubic foot cement mixer and mortar mixer from Harbor Freight. It is a $219 item and I got it with a 25% off coupon that they had uh, for April Fools or actually Easter weekend. Um, took me about, uh, I'll guess about three hours to put it together. And of course, you know, things that are from China, the directions aren't always that good. But I watched a couple of videos on YouTube and uh, that helped quite a bit. A um, couple things that I ran into that, uh, here's one here. The instructions on this plate, this arm, you pull this arm towards you and it engages these little tabs in those slots to keep it in place. So you can set it at different positions for dumping and mixing and so forth straight up. All right. The directions didn't say anything about putting this this plate on. So I had the arm, they said put the arm on, I put the arm on and then discovered that hey well this got to go behind the arm. So what I ended up doing is just I took the arm off and just bolted this on because I figured this would be in the way with putting the rest of the drum assembly together so I actually waited till the very last thing. This was the last thing to go on. And also something in the directions it doesn't show and it doesn't say is there's a spring here okay that goes inside this tube and you can adjust the tension with this bolt here okay this keeps the arm engaged in those slots so that when it's turned on and it's rattling that uh, it doesn't pop itself out so you adjust this it gives more tension on there in case this thing is, is coming loose but up inside here, there's a little round metal disc. It almost looks like a, a washer with the hole not punched in the middle. It's just solid. It's a disc, a little disc. And it goes up in here first and then the spring. That gives the bolt, pushes on the disc, which pushes on the spring. Without that disc, the bolt would just go right down the center of the spring. and There would be no tension adjustment. And it's in one of the little packages. Uh... <clears throat> And it's not talked about or shown anywhere, but, but that's what that little disc is for. It goes in here. You put it, this will be upside down. Drop it in there, put your spring in, set this in place. Okay. And, uh, yeah, first you start out with this piece here. And this piece here goes across. And this leg with the handle, you end up putting these bolts in and these bolts and then there's one on the end down on the end down here and down here there's one down there okay and I put the washers behind the head of the bolt okay because these nuts are uh, like a locking nut they kind of bite into the metal and lock so I put the washers on the other side. Um, this mechanism here has a washer. It has two nuts. So you, you put the one nut on, you squeeze. This is going to be a little wider than you kind of just squeeze it down when you take a wrench. And, a, and then when you're done, you double nut this. There's two nuts. You double nut it so it doesn't vibrate loose. That's the purpose of the double nut. Okay. And uh, one thing to mention was these pipes on the end down here where the wheels go on, the wheels wouldn't go on because these ends were, one was damaged a little bit, you probably see it right there, and the one on the other side when they punched the hole in, it didn't punch right, the metal was pushed up. So I took a bar and I stuck it in the hole up there and took a little hammer and just tapped that metal back down so the wheel would go on 
and here I took that round bar when I stuck it in there and I just kind of pulled it over a little bit like this it pulled that back into shape and the wheels went on nice a couple of big washers one on each side then you drop a cotter key in there no big deal there um, one thing that the directions didn't talk about either was this little piece right here okay and uh, it doesn't really show it it doesn't really talk about it but this is your your motor housing here and uh, this is the other half of the motor housing you've got your cord for plugging it in 110 volt grounded your on off switch this yellow thing here that you pull that out and then it can't be turned on by the kids if you got your back turned snap that back into place then you can turn it on and off okay and then underneath here is a metal plate. If I can get a shot of that or not. There's a metal plate underneath here. So the slots, it goes and then angles up. All right. <clears throat> and uh, where it angles up, that's where these two long bolts go through. And originally I thought, well, that plate just bolts this little piece of sheet metal housing here that that's no good and then I deduced that these long bolts and this little bracket has got to go behind here that really pinches that bracket to this post this post here and makes it nice and rigid and then the motor sets on that plate and you adjust it around in there and and uh, get it bolted down no big deal there and then just three screws your cover goes on there okay but the real surprise for me was this gasket in here I didn't realize this turkey had a gasket and the first thing the directions say is uh, glue that gasket to the lower drum because this drum is bolted together in two halves okay this is your top half here and this is your bottom half here and you're like a rack and pinion drive Got this gear down in here under this little cover see that little gear and the teeth stick up and drive this uh, this lower drum so when you get it it comes in two pieces and you have to bolt it together there's like eight bolts around here that's you bolt it together then a gasket to keep it leaking and it said it said uh, use some gasket glue to <laughs> to hold that on the on the upper half here and then set it have this thing up and then set the upper part of course these blades aren't on yet put that on and then put your nuts and bolts and things around the perimeter and uh, it says that that glue is not supplied. <laughs> I go, oh, okay. I don't have any glue. Well, anyway, what I did was I thought about it for a while, and it came to me. What I did is I set the drum, the top drum on top, and then I went inside with the gasket, and I stuck it I, with my right hand. I lifted up a little bit on the, the upper drum, slipped the gasket in until I could see the holes align, and then dropped a bolt down and I just went around on the inside with each bolt lift it up get the gasket in place where I could see down through here I could see the gasket hole and I just dropped the, the, the bolt down through there just went around and did that and then after I had uh, had all those just dropped down in there I went along and I picked it up a little bit because the gasket was really kind of wavy in between the bolts it was sticking out a lot more than where the bolts are so what I discovered was is you pick this drum up and push the gasket in a little bit in between the bolts kind of lift it up and push it in it kind of sits that gasket actually if you can see it there the gasket sits on top of those little uh, protrusions where this metal was stamped through these these teeth there's like teeth sticking up inside and that gasket has to 